Hello, this video is the relationship between the subjects of history and aliens. Um, I've gotten uh, messages to me by, I, I think it was Shift for Shizzle, who was like, oh, I like your alien videos though, do more of those. And I think a lot of people, like, most of the people who subscribe to me these days, it's because of my alien videos. And, I'm kind of losing interest in the alien videos, not because I'm losing interest in it, but because uh, I don't have the time to p just to like watch that kind of stuff. I'd like to put all of my time into uh, studying history, and I find actually history more more fascinating to me now. And I think uh, the two subjects are related. Um, I think actually history is is the subject that's the father subject to all subjects. It's the most important subject. It's the subject you can use to study uh, every subject. Every single subject would, s would start by the history of that subject. And uh, if you, you know, if you want to learn like chemistry, you would start from the beginning. <laughs> and um, it would be more fascinating to learn that way. And uh, you can understand it more. And um, integrate it with other uh, subjects through history. Um, but that's another video. This video is the relationship between aliens and history. Um, aliens, the study of aliens, uh, as I have learned just in the last few years with the, the videos of Bashar and also um, Seth from the Jane Roberts talks about this kind of stuff. And <sighs> as soon as I get the money, I want to buy the whole. CD series of Seth and hear all of the channelings, like listen to it, because I don't have the time to read it, but um, talking about parallel universes, which is something that scientists are thinking about um, due to the string theory, finding out that, uh, you know, we're just a, we're, we exist in this, in this universe from a certain vibration of subatomic particles in like a certain shape, and if you tweak the shape a little bit, then you could be in a completely different parallel universe as this one that's almost identical but a little bit different kind of like in the Big Bang when the Big Bang created it created all these parallel universes that, that uh, evolved independently of each other so hmm, like that movie Sliders where he invented the wormhole to get to other parallel universes and he goes to one where England still owns America and um, this kind of stuff. So, and then you can go from one parallel universe to the other, tunnel through, and it turns out that that's real. Um, that's what Bashar says. He, he tunneled here from a parallel universe, three thousand years in the future, uh, from his home planet, which is three hundred and fifty light years from here on another dimension. So we can't see it, his planet or his sun, because they're on another dimension. But, um, but he came. But he was originally he originated on the Earth. Um, you know, the, the gray aliens from the earth and they mix their seed with the humans on this earth. So, a race that comes out of two separate parallel universes, so... <laughs> parallel universes talk to each other. But, according to my view of the universe, my philosophical outlook on the universe is that makes sense to me. The idea of parallel universes. Um, a lot of, like, Christians would tell you, oh, when you die and you go to heaven, you get anything you want. I don't know what they would say. I haven't, I don't, I haven't talked to Christians that much, but I think that's what they say. Like, you get whatever you want. God grants you whatever you want in heaven. Snap your fingers and you get, um, and you get a, a, a Twinkies bar in your hand and this kind of stuff. And I think, uh, I like that idea. I like the idea of, of you get whatever you want, um, whatever you think of. Uh, hmm. Later on, you get it. And that's how the world is, really. Um, people think up um, an invention, and then they create it and they invent it. And people think up of an invention or a new business that will make them riches, and they do that, and it happens. And left, right, and center, all these people's dreams are coming true. Um, even the people whose dreams don't come true at the beginning, they keep plugging away at it and their dreams come true. That's the natural state of 
life. That's what life is all about. So if you extend that out, extrapolate that out into the wider universe, uh, that has to hold true with everything. Whatever you, uh, I, <sighs> whatever you imagine has happens in the future. So we imagine a utopian world. Boom. That means the utopian world has to uh, hap has to happen. There's no there's no way around that. A utopian world will come because we imagine it. Um, and obviously that is what we're getting. We're we're coming towards a utopian world now. Look at all the racial integration in, in America, and look at how how much more tolerant people are. How much more you can get away with. Like me, I've got the long hair, man, and I haven't been arrested. It's like boom. Long hair, not getting arrested. You know, you got you got black people walking down the street, you know, and they're not getting arrested. It's like, whoa, you know, world's getting better. So, uh, plus we're getting smarter, learning more, becoming more, more of this, more of that, new sports, new fun, left, right, and center. Some people are like, oh yeah, the world's getting worse. I don't think the world's getting worse. I think people are just waking up to how fucked up the world has always been and they want to change it, so. So, um, so um, it's kind of like the study of history is not just the study of the past. It's also the study of the future. That's, that's um, nothing that we learned in school. When you study history in school, you only learn the past. And then it's not even complete history. Um, I, I had more time um, in class studying math than history which is completely insanity. Um, I had more, I mean, I, I only remember having one history class. I was in 10th grade, I had history class, and it's like, all right, that's enough of history. We had like a, a semester, I think, of like government class in like eighth grade. I don't know who are the idiots who are writing up these curriculums for American schools. I should do a critique of that movie, Waiting for Superman, because the problem with the educational system has nothing to do with money. Uh, it has to fucking do with the curriculum, dude. They're giving people the wrong classes. But that's another video. Um, yeah, so, but history is also future and the study of the future. Because if you really know the past, you can predict the future. Um, and those people who do know the past are the best at predicting the future. Like, you know, the prophets who would prophesy the future. <laughs> they were the scholars who knew the past and our forefathers, the founding fathers of America, were scholars of, the, of history, of historical. Who was it? Alexander Hamilton, who studied all of the all of the governmental systems ever in the history of the world, and then brought them forth to the founding fathers to decide which ones we want to do, which one we want to choose, and then so they could write a good constitution and predict the future of a, a future world that is Omega. America, and uh, so, um, and people who, who predict false futures are people who really don't know English, and do know study, not history. So, but now the re relationship with aliens is that aliens live in the future. Uh, they live in our future. That you know, their past was similar to our past. They're just in another timeline. And uh, a lot of the, you know, like in the case of the gray aliens, they live in our future. They live in the Earth's future. So they literally live in our future, but um, but uh, so in that regard, the study of, of aliens is the actual study of future history. But um, but there is a really important um, also um, relationship between the study of past history and aliens as well. If you wanted to include in that large subject of aliens the subject of parallel universes. Parallel universes are um, um, just imagining other worlds out there, other possibilities, like what would have happened if I had of not married that girl but married that girl instead, and uh, or not had that job but had that job instead in that world. And then you imagine that world, well, that's an alien world. That's the subject of the aliens. So possible, um, possible uh, parallel universes. And you also study parallel universes of the past. So past parallel universes. And I think that's how it works. 
in reality is um, all the parallel universes are connected to each other and uh, and they're all you know there's an infinite amount of parallel universes next to each other on our same timeline <sighs> so there's an infinite amount of parallel universes that are um, the year 2011 just like us only something else is going on on the earth but there's an infinite amount of parallel universes that are up, up infinitely up you know one second in front of us one second behind us so basically anything that you could possibly imagine already exists and so you just imagine and then you go there and that's how you can wormhole between parallel universe to parallel universes and we actually do that in our minds all the time um, just switching around whatever is appropriate and you can really switch around between parallel universes after you die that's when you enter the void of timelessness where you can kind of reboot your system and, and, and get reborn into the 1500s if you want and um, um, that actually has been scientifically proven by the double slit experiment how physical objects can enter in to timelessness the void of timelessness um, the double slit experiment um, works with carbon molecules, 60 carbon molecules put together to create a large carbon molecule called the, uh, um, a, 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 what are those called, those octagon, or those, those um, well, the Buckminster Fuller balls, the Bucky balls. And they're as big, I don't know exactly how many microns across they are, but they're just about as big, they're not, they're almost as big as the double helix in our DNA. So uh, basically our double helix, your, your DNA can even warp drive out of it into uh, parallel universes and into timelessness and, and restructure itself with the power of your mind. Um, but uh, with the buckyball, the double slit experiment, um, you, they shoot buckyballs in there one at a time. And these are like pieces of freaking carbon atoms, you know, it's matter. But they shoot them in one at a time through a, a with two holes there, but it can only choose one hole. Um, but they don't take the picture of it, and uh, and then you look at the screen, and they have all been bouncing off of each other because there's all these all the lines are like that, as though the waves have been bumping into each other and bouncing off into each other. So even though they're shooting the buckyballs one at a time, the buckyball goes through, it goes into the spirit world, and it turns into this big uh, spider web where they're all of the buckyballs are bouncing off of each other for eternity and then go in. So it goes into the timelessness. And that's a scientific fact. Uh, and that'd be cool to do that experiment in schools, just to bring it home. But, uh, but that's, that's proof that you know, time doesn't exist. So when you die, you can uh, go, into, go into that world of infinite possibilities and just choose one. And that's how you do it with a subtle, subtle experiment. When you, when you turn the camera on to, to look at the buckyball go through, that's when you're choosing, because you're paying attention to it, that's when you're choosing one specific parallel universe that you're going to live in and experience. And so that's when the buckyball starts, starts only going through and not bouncing in, into itself and just hitting the straight line over and over again. If you watch it over and over again, the gun's doing the same thing, the screen's doing the same thing, but all of a sudden... Um, there, it's it's going through as one buckyball just because you're watching it. So you can create your own world after you die and be reborn into the past. And so that's why, that's how history is related to the subject of uh, parallel universes. Because uh, when you die, you don't just, uh, you know, go forward in time, but you go, you bounce all over. And... Um, and so that's pretty much what the study of aliens is. You study aliens to study... The study of aliens is the study of all the different possibilities in the universe, and what, whichever of those possibilities captures your fancy the most. And um, right now we're all interested in, like, flying around to other planets and meeting people who live on other planets and stuff. But um, we also have the tendency to become overwhelmed when there's too much information, we like to shut it out and not pay attention to it. Um, that's why people are so socially conservative, and you know, there's that whole thing like, oh, that's too much information. That's why we don't give our information out. 
that's why everybody's so anonymous. I don't need to go into the reasons of why that is. But so when it, when it does become possible or, or evident to us that there are aliens all over the place, and we know for sure, it's like, well, how are we going to react? And we're probably going to be like, okay, well, that's cool that they exist, but it's too much for us to deal with right now. Um, let's just know that they're there and know that they can come and invite the ones down who we want. But, but uh, we have a limited amount of time to study a certain, a limited amount of subjects. And I think that's going to, I've already done a video about this, but that's going to drive us, our, our, our focus back towards ourselves and our own past history. And we're going to want to know, like, what, what's the parallel universe that we live in? What's the world that we live in right now? And what did it come from? What happened in our past? And so we study it, and we'll see why we are the way we are. But, um, but studying history, you can, um, once you become good at history, and another, um, sub, another subject within the subject of history was, like, parallel universes in history. Like, imagining what would have happened if there had have been no Genghis Khan and uh, the Arabic Empire continued to grow and uh, maybe we would all be Muslim. What would have happened if America didn't win their revolution of independence? We would still be, we'd still have a king and queen. Uh, and then you could write whole histories about that. But it's interesting to think about when you die and you go back Maybe you would maybe you would want to um, go back in the past, live in the past, and uh, that kind of goes back to uh, the cascading. I call it cascading effect, in that um, all the different parallel universes are connected to each other, but they're all um, bleeding into each other. They're all communicating with each other, and so the older parallel universes are helping the younger parallel universes. So. Um, we have these idealized imaginations of, uh, of kingdoms where, uh, where like there's peace, like the king is the king, peaceful king, and we, we don't have much um, technology. We don't have um, electricity, and we grow our own food, and we ride around on horses, and we don't have internal combustion engines and um, we live in like m shacked houses and we have like a romantic idea of that and, and I think a lot of, of our past was like that was and a lot of families lived wonderful lives like that and but a lot of it was uh, was filled with turmoil like we had wars all the time and slavery served them and um, I think when you when you reincarnate, and this is also I guess the subject of reincarnation. Uh, when you reincarnate, you can choose if you if you're if you're fascinated with a certain level of society, you want to be like a hippie and live in in that you know, connected with nature, kingdom of England and the eight hundreds, and you study the you study history and you. You've seen the pictures, and it just captures your fancy. And you die, and you've been thinking about it so much while you're alive, and then you're looking at that time, and you're just looking at the whole growth of history. Um, and you can actually see the passage of history and, and how even the, the differences of each decade and each, each century, the personality differences of all of them and, and what... What led? What action led to another? What war led to this? And what? What? The relationship between uh, inventions and everything. You can see all that when you're dead, but you decide to actually be reborn back there. But uh, and then you're reborn back there, but you're an older soul than the people you're reborn into. Because you already lived through that, and you lived in the future before. So you go in there, and you you kind of bring that utopian idea with you, and so then you go, and you're like special, and you. And then, so you become like a, a monk, and you preach peace, and you, so maybe like Jesus was, was a, just a normal person where he came from, which would have been like alien land, like 5,000 years ahead of what we are now, flying around in spaceships in Utopia, and he just had this imagining, this, this fanciful dream of 
Roman Judaism, and he because he maybe he was he was a history student, and he goes, "Oh, I want to be born back in there." So he's born back, you know, but he but he's an older soul because he's experienced all of the um, the future utopia for so many lives, and so he brought that with him, and he brought that vision with him, and so there's all these other people who were, who lived there, and that was just their natural world that they all created for themselves to live in. And they were still learning the lessons that needed to be learned in a primitive society like that. And he was like, he was like, oh, I love being a hippie and like, you know, not having electricity or flying saucer to fly around. But, but like, why are they being so violent? Why aren't they? Why are they? Um, why are they? Uh, they not respecting each other and all this stuff. So he, so he, he, he becomes inspired to help them. And maybe even that's why people get reborn in the past to become inspired to help the people in their present. And so then he became a great, uh, a great prophet and changed the world and made the world a better place. And so that's, that's like one, so as you, as you go back, as, so the older parallel universes actually have people, lots of people, who get reborn in the past because they're interested in those areas and then improve those. So each parallel universe is, that comes behind, um, they get better and better and better. So the period of history, like the 1500s, the period of history, you know, before the printing press, before the invention of all these inventions, you know, in this little pocket of history, they become better, more utopian. As, as you get into the younger and younger universes, they become more and more utopian because they're getting more and more help and being infused with older and older souls to live out, to create a world that they actually dreamt of happening. So um, I think there are universes out there, parallel universes out there that go through, and, or maybe it hasn't happened yet, but it will, that go through the evolution of all those, all the different evolution of inventions and stages growing through society perfectly smoothly without any wars. and. It's like, oh, this guy invented the printing press. Oh, cool. Let's in, let's let's incorporate it now. Yay! And there's no there's nobody going. Oh, you can't have that. And uh, you know, like, there's an overpopulation in one part of the world, and other people migrate down, and they get incorporated peacefully into the new people from the south. Oh, you had, you're coming to live amongst us. Yes, come. We welcome you. You know, like just perfect peace. And um, I think. Uh, um, the the study of history uh, that's going to turn our uh, capture our imaginations more when we start paying attention to that uh, when we realize that there's aliens and then and then we'll we'll kind of turn back to the aliens and be like oh wow well, yeah now we can now we can actually imagine we know exactly what what we want in the future and imagine what laws we want to have and, and the kind of freedoms that we want to have and, uh, and finally be ready to actually jump on the spaceship and fly to their planet and look at their planet and check it out and come back and bring that cool um, inventions and ideas here to the earth and then be able to just fly around to all the other planets and integrate. So. Um, 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 and then, you know, maybe even develop the technology to fly to other parallel universes. Because that's what the aliens do. They're, they're flying around to whatever parallel universe they want. Like, for example, Bashar. He's, he lives in a parallel universe 3,000 years in the future. And he's like, all right, well, let's see. We're going to go to the planet Earth in the year 2011 when we were given their people um, creating our race from the, the sperm and the DNA of them and our, and our ancestors. And uh, we know when they're like about to become an integrated planet um, and, and create, um, become self-sustained and create free energy and end all wars and speak one world language, they'll have one world religion. And, but they're still like destroying the planet and there's still a lot of people who think they're all gonna die and there's gonna be a world war. And we're gonna go there and help them transition into the new world easier. And, uh, and they just go there. They just imagine a world like that, and they go go there. Um, or they could even imagine like a 
just like us, we watch movies. It's like, oh, what movie do you feel like? I want to watch an Armageddon movie. Like my wife, she was really into horror movies. I want to watch a horror movie. They're like, all right. Well, they can actually watch horror movies that really do exist. They can jump in their spaceship and fly and, wa and come to a parallel Earth where they had a, a, world, a nuclear war, and they'll just watch it, and they can maybe even record it and be like, wow, trippy, and then leave. You know, and to them, and maybe to us, because a lot of people go, well, why? There is no God, or there are no aliens, because if there were, they would help us. But that's no use, because that kind of world exists anyways. It, every, everything you can imagine already does exist, so it's kind of like um, you're never going to fix anything by just going and saving that parallel universe from the war. Um, you're just going to. Um, you just because that's not what life is about. Life is about learning, um, learning that there are consequences to actions. And so if people make make actions that have negative consequences, like starting a world war, and then they get saved, and there's no world war, well, then they think that there's no consequence to starting a world war. So when they get reborn, they're going to just start another world war, and it's. What, are the, the same aliens going to come back and fix that over and over again? That's not going to help anything. It's like a little kid. Um, a little kid who like, likes to throw his ice cream against the wall. And then the parent who like cleans the ice cream up oh, and buys them a new ice cream. Oh, good, I just crisis averted. I didn't have to um, embarrass the kid or whatever. But then he just keeps throwing the ice cream against the wall. No, you got to go like... He throws the ice cream against the wall, and you gotta go, oh no, well that's gonna take a while to clean up, isn't it? Why do I have to clean it up? Yeah. Oh, fuck you. I didn't have to yesterday, well you have to now. And then he won't throw the ice cream against the wall the next day. So, it's all about uh, experience and learning to deal with your, your, uh, your uh, actions. So basically, you know, and then you can, you can bring that into you know, once you start studying history and parallel universes and aliens, you can actually bring that into politics and use that as a reason. Like we need to st we need to learn how to deal with our actions, consequences of our actions, and take responsibility for our own actions if we're ever gonna grow as a society. And so, therefore, we have to legalize all drugs so that people deal with the consequences of their actions of taking the drugs with themselves, the consequences of their bodies and their lives rather than spending money, $20 billion a year um, on the war on drugs, you know, causing gang wars in South America, um, spending all of our money going and killing people who cultivate drugs. It's ridiculous. We, we, we should be spending that money on uh, education, renewable energy. There's all kinds of stuff we should be spending money on, but we spend money on that. Like, we don't... We're not treated like adults. We're never. I'm 37 years old, and I'm not given. I'm I'm seen as not being responsible enough to go into a Walgreens and buy Advair, even though I need it. I have to pay a doctor who already makes like 500,000 bucks a year or more. I don't know how much those motherfuckers make. 200. I have to pay him 250 bucks. Give me permission to take my Advair, and then he only writes me a prescription for like five of them. So then two months later, I got to pay him another 250 bucks to buy my Advair. They don't give me my permission to grow a marijuana plant in my backyard. Like no consequences to the actions. You don't you don't give any anybody uh, the ability to deal with the consequences of their actions. So then they're just gonna um, they're never gonna learn. It's like the kid throwing the ice cream in the wall and then it's wasting money. So just plug that into all that other stuff. But uh, yeah, that's the relationship between history and uh, aliens. I don't think you can be interested in. Aliens and imagine Star Trek, you know, planets out there and parallel universes and all that kind of stuff, and imagine the future without being intimately uh, aware of the past of your planet and all of the different, you know, causes and effects. Like this, this invention caused this invention type of a thing. This invention caused this new political system. So, you know, the pr printing press killed the monarchical system because everybody became educated and uh, you know the certain kind of boats invented you know guns changed the way that we form battles and then changed 
the Black Death stopped um, slavery in Europe, this kind of stuff. So, um, and then extrapolate that and bring it into your present world. So, anyways, uh, yeah. Um, so don't unsubscribe to me just because I start making history videos. You should be interested in history as well. So anyways, I think I've talked long enough. <laughs>